This is the Six Man Show, an Orlando Magic podcast, with your hosts Luke Silvia and Jonathan Osborne, covering all things Magic basketball. By fans, for fans, go Magic! What's going on, Orlando Magic fans? You guys are back with the Six Man Show. It is July thirtieth, two thousand twenty-one. We are recording this. Uh, I just got home from Orlando. Kevin is still driving home from Orlando. Luke, uh, live from Omaha, Nebraska. Luke, it was a pretty crazy, eventful draft night for the Orlando Magic. How are we doing? It it didn't go like I thought. Um, no, I, but no. <laughs> but I will say the uh, I I did get to attend the Orlando Magic UK draft party. Um, which was fun to get to talk with those guys over at Orlando Magic UK. Again, we had an episode with them recently. If you guys haven't checked that out, uh, we collabed with them. It was a fun episode, uh, kind of one that's never going to age, uh, really. It's just an all-time Magic draft thing there. So um, got to hang out with them, though, again tonight. So that was really cool um, to get to be with them and, and talk with them. Dan Savage came through, had some Q&As. There was people that, you know, joined into the zoom from the arena um so it was really cool uh and then you know got to join with uh, i know jeff well god put on something for a draft party as well so scooter magruder showed up there um and just had uh, good interactions popped in there for a second too so yeah it was uh, i stayed for pick five with orlando magic uk then uh stayed for pick eight with well god's uh draft party so it was a it was a good time yeah, so we were uh, downtown Orlando tonight. Mm-hmm. We were at Harry Buffalo. Uh, really good turnout there. A lot of people came through. That was pretty dope. And then you know we walked over to Amway for the draft party. Um, yeah, that we just the section we were in 106. A lot obviously people from the show and everything like that came and, and sat with us. That was a ton of fun. Really lively crowd, especially as the draft started and we got close to to the Orlando Magic pick. So kind of just wanted to break down um, the NBA draft because you know some of us you know especially myself we went into this draft Luke hoping that the Magic were going to be able to trade up either for Jalen Green and and Evan Mobley so Detroit was on the clock and it's like kind of silly in my opinion Detroit's been on the clock for a month and we give them five extra minutes at the beginning of the draft it's kind of strange to me but it's whatever and and Woj already ruined the pick four hours prior I thought he was gonna ruin the magic pick before dinner tonight so I'm glad that didn't happen but uh yeah you continue yeah and then even Reese on the ESPN broadcast is like oh well the pick is gonna be this and they went like we'll get we'll talk about Jalen Suggs and and Scotty Barnes in a second but everybody thought Jalen Suggs was going to the Raptors and as everyone knows he is gonna be uh he's on his way to Orlando right now so but yeah Kate Cunningham goes number one and then we're sitting there crossing our fingers, Jalen Green, <laughs> waiting to see if there's some any type of trade talks between Orlando and Houston. That never never came to fruition. Evan Mobley at three, and to this point, the draft is shaking out exactly the way that we all thought it would. And we're sitting there where everybody's all day, the last couple of days actually, people have been talking about how Toronto was really focused on Jalen Suggs at four. So we're sitting there, and I'm recording. Kevin's recording the crowd. I was recording me and Kevin. We're putting together like a, you know, draft day. Not really like a vlog, but people. We talked to people before the draft to see what their predictions were going to be. Mm-hmm. Then we got some great footage during the draft, and then people's reactions after the draft. But we're recording when Toronto makes the pick for Scotty Barnes, and the Amway just exploded. I was telling you, it was probably about a, a quarter as full as like game three of the 2018 2019 playoffs against Toronto and everybody remembers you know Nikola Vucevic hits three late in that game to you know take the lead or tie it whatever the case was and the building exploded Luke you were in there I'm telling you that building (laughs) tonight when Toronto took Scotty Barnes was almost every bit as loud as that because all of a sudden the realization was that we were getting Jalen Suggs so I mean we can we can talk you know kind of the way that you feel about the pick specifically yeah. but what were your like what were you thinking in real time i i was shocked i know I, and first of all kudos to jake fisher um who reported yesterday that it looked like toronto was uh flirting with the idea and almost you know set on practically the idea of scotty barnes going to toronto I honestly, I saw it yesterday. I, I, you know, I looked at it. I know people were reacting, but in the back of my mind, I was thinking, "There's no way Toronto doesn't pick Jalen Sucks. 
just because of the way Jalen Suggs has been talked about all year um, versus Scotty Barnes even. And, and, and I think that, you know, we were here just a month or two ago, Jonathan, talking about like, um, you know, I, I thought it was very much a hot take that I was saying that I wanted Scott, that I would take Scotty Barnes over Jalen Suggs. I said I would take Kuminga. And then you were like, would you take Scotty Barnes? And I was like, yeah, I take Scotty Barnes over Jalen Suggs. And in that moment, that, that felt like a really hot take. And then coming into the draft tonight, it didn't feel like a hot take anymore. And it became reality when an, when an actual NBA team took him over Jalen Suggs, took Scotty Barnes over Jalen Suggs. So you're just kind of sitting there thinking like, the Magic have to draft Jalen Suggs. It yeah. doesn't matter. Everything goes out the window. I I was I have very much been on the forefront of of Moses Moody. Screw it. Let's take him at five. And and after that, I was like, okay, I don't think that they're going to uh, take Moody at five anymore at all. There's no shot of it. I don't even think there's a shot that Kumi is getting taken at this point. It's Jalen Suggs. So the moment Scotty Barnes' name got called, I knew Jalen Suggs was next. Yeah, as soon as Scotty Barnes was was chosen, you know, by the Toronto Raptors, there was just Suggs, Suggs, Suggs chance throughout the arena. You can see, you know, on Orlando Magic social media, your boy made a, a quick cameo there. Uh, I saw that in that in that saw video. That. So that was, your heart that was out. pretty dope. Chant, chant my heart out. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, I just could not. We jumped up so fast when Scotty Barnes was picked. I my legs went numb, dude. Like I'm, I had like spaghetti legs. I I couldn't think straight. I was just like, "There's no way that this is happening." That they really yeah. like the when we talk about the plums on Masai Ujiri, <laughs> to to he that's his guy. They went and got yeah. Scotty Barnes. You know, I think my whole thought process with you know kind of you know the last couple of days coming around to the Scotty Barnes pick was that his floor is like a really high level complimentary piece for a really good team. Like, is he going to be the guy? Probably not. But he's going to a team in Toronto where he doesn't have to be the guy. And then all of a sudden, like, I just hadn't even really thought about Jalen Suggs too much until actually we were at Harry Buffalo. We were sitting, you know, sitting with some guys. You know, fans were talking about all the scenarios tonight. And I was like, you know what? If Toronto ends up taking Scotty Barnes and Jalen Suggs is there at five, there are much worse outcomes that I could think of when Markel comes back than Markel starting next to Jalen Suggs and then coming off of the bench we have RJ Hampton and Cole Anthony like that's almost like two dynamic duos in your guard positions in the starting unit the bench unit like things really could be a lot worse off so after that though the next the next pick almost everybody thought it was either going to be Jonathan Kuminga or Moses Moody or James Booknight and Oklahoma City takes Josh Giddy. At six, and everyone's like, what is happening? So at that point, it was like, okay, we are absolutely getting a chance at Jonathan Kaminga, Moses Moody, James Booknight. Like, one of those guys were all thinking that. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the next pick um, at seven, Jonathan Kaminga. So I'll, I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, we can get Moody. We can get Shen Goon, who I've been high on. We can, um, we can get Booknight. Like, it's really just, you know, ours for the taking whoever we want at this spot um uh, and you saw right after oklahoma city or um excuse me right after um the warriors took jonathan kaminga you saw john and jeff in the war room everybody celebrating and to me that was like okay that tells me that at eight they're getting the guy who they really want at eight jake fisher uh was on a i believe it was a, a twitter space either mm -hmm. yesterday or the day before talking about how a team promised Wagner that if he fell to them they would take him and he said it wasn't Sacramento and he alluded to the fact that it was the Orlando Magic and me and, and Kevin today were talking and we're like there's no way that John and Jeff promise somebody if you're there we're going to take you at eight it just doesn't really seem like a very well ham thing to do lo and behold at eight with Moses Moody sitting there James Booknight Alperin Shengun <laughs> Mos or Vic as guys on the team call him Moritz Wagner's little brother, Franz Wagner, now plays for the Orlando Magic. Dude, the the craziest part about it is like you were saying with Kevin, you guys were saying like there's no way that, that they promised anybody anything. But but I think that's where we're wrong and we're obviously we were wrong. Um because the 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 whole thing with them is that the front office doesn't leak anything. We don't know what they promised people on draft night. We don't know th those conversations at all. And I think tonight showed that 
because just because they keep things under wraps doesn't mean like they don't do things like that because I'm sure that wasn't John and Jeff who, who leaked that information at all. Um, it was probably somebody from, you know, Wagner's camp, I guess that, that had leaked that out maybe out of excitement and like, you know, we're going to hopefully go, we're at least going to the top eight, you know, talking about, you know, Wagner himself. So yeah, I, I think that it's really interesting that Wagner was the choice there. Uh, I think that, you know, I so badly want to stop the stereotype of like, if they're tall, if they've got length and they can defend, then you're already on the magic, that whole stigma. But it happened again tonight, Jonathan, that the stigma continues. It's real. They, they, they heard Franz, man, he, uh, he grew two inches. What do you say? We uh, promised him a spot on the team. (laughs) And uh, so, so that's, I mean, He's he's good at a lot of things, um, and we'll get into this later. But he's good at a lot of things. Um, but like I said a few weeks back, he he's good at those things, but he's not elite at any one thing. But he also is still very young. So there's a lot to be seen with uh, those two guys on the team. The draft could have gone a lot worse tonight, in my opinion. Um, we already had nightmare scenarios in our head, and I I don't think that this was any scenario in our head, good or bad. Like this, we didn't put this night in any category tonight uh before tonight yeah i don't we never discuss the possibility of of a jalen suggs mo wagner draft like that just honestly never came up we didn't up. really discuss the possibility of either of them individually either until we heard about you know suggs possibly falling to five yesterday like that was never really a, a an actual conversation i don't think um in terms of like the magic circles i mean granted people were saying yes we want suggs we want suggs but like the the big push for Suggs didn't start until like a day ago, and Wagner. Uh, I've not even heard a Magic fan talk to, to like speak about Wagner at all. So I mean, like we reviewed him on the show, uh, you know his stuff. We went kind of a deep dive, you know that when we did that. But yeah, I mean that's the thing is like we didn't really talk about these guys individually either. I mean, nonetheless, together. Yeah, it was definitely a surprise because it seemed, at least amongst Orlando Magic fans, that that eighth pick was really, it was like two factions, like the Moody and the Book Knight, and that's that's all it was, and everybody was really excited for that. And then it's Wagner, and then all of a sudden, like, that, you know, the promise rumor comes right. back, and you're like, wow, like, they really must have promised this guy. And then people were joking, they're like, okay, so we're definitely keeping Mo Wagner, like right. this off season, you're not going to draft a guy. No, but and then seriously. cut his brother. You but know seriously. what I mean? So, yeah, seriously. So, um, no, I think, I mean, Suggs, obviously, I think part of me, I was so high on Jalen Green, and I still think that he's probably the better prospect. But when you ter- when you talk in terms of picking a guy, in, you know, like a safe pick and a guy that's going to have a high floor, I think Jalen Suggs is absolutely that kind of guy. You talk about a guy that's super competitive, um, you know, he's going to have a high motor. He's going to be a pit bull defensively. He's really going to compete on both ends of the floor. A guy that has pretty special passing abilities. You look back at some of the like three quarter bounce, you know, court bounce passes that yeah. he made um, at Gonzaga. Obviously, played with a lot of talented guys there. So, yeah, man, I just the whole building was just in utter disbelief that Toronto took Scotty Barnes, a, a guy sitting behind me immediately goes to the Raptors subreddit and he's like the the subreddit is just melting down. <laughs> Raptors fans were freaking out that they passed on Jalen Suggs. So and then I mean you just kinda uh, guys that we were talking about, you know, just going down, you see Book Knight going um at eleven to the Charlotte Hornets. I really like the pairing of him with LaMelo Ball and then Moses Moody, fourteen. So we talked about how a great draft for us at five and eight would be Kuminga and Moody. <laughs> And the Warriors got that at seven and fourteen. Yeah, it, like they had an incredible stroke of luck with you know guys like Josh Giddy and, and Franz <laughs> Wagner kind of going ahead of where they were mocked. Yeah. And um, yeah, well, the, the Warriors did really really well tonight as well. No, I mean, and I I think that they won the draft. They had the draft that I would have liked for Orlando to have. Obviously, Suggs is is a, a great you know. I a, think Detroit won the addition. draft. Like. Detroit well, wins the specific, draft by default, kind of. But well, I, yes. I know what you're saying. But they win the draft in the sense of like Golden State 
was Woj said this. Golden State was heavily considering Moses Moody at seven. Right. They got him seven picks later. And you just kept seeing him fall. And I texted uh, in one of my group chats and was like, the, you know, Moses Moody at this point, like, he's just not going. Maybe he'll be there at 33 at this point. You know, that's what I need. I, I was joking about that because it was like pick after pick got named and Moses Moody didn't get named. Um, I'm still high on Moody. I think that he's going to be incredible in Golden State. I Especially think that, in that system. Oh, no doubt. I mean, it's already an established system. There's no building a culture like their culture has been built for years, and it's built on finals appearances and championships. And Moody just gets to walk in there and be an everything guy for them. And he gets to, uh, you know, guard the better players, give Clay and Steph the the chance to just do their thing on offense and give them a load off on defense. Um, he can step in and hit the open three. Like he, Moses Moody's going to be a problem, and good for him. I mean, he, I I like him. He impressed a lot in the interviews, apparently in the draft, you know, process. Anyway, they are, you know really likable guy. So you know, I am happy for Moses Moody. Um, Wish he was in a magic uniform, but uh, I, I guess I'll root from a, for a, from afar. The other guy that it seemed like you know the Magic were entertaining at eight was Zaire Williams out of Stanford. As far as we know, he's the only guy that was confirmed to have two workouts for the Magic, and there was some talk that he was going to be taken at eight. So at eight, you're just like there were so many directions the Magic could go. Um, you know, Franz Wagner, we'll talk more about him, you know, kind of in depth in a moment here. But I do think they looked at the roster in you know a certain respect and said you know we need forward depth like in terms of forwards that are you know on the roster right now it's Chuma and it's J.I. and that's basically it so Franz is going to give you you know some decent size there um you know he's going to give you you know a lot of um you know a lot of good characteristics he's a you know high skill guy um six nine so he's not he's not huge um but again he's going to give you depth at the the forward spot um Jalen Suggs, I mean, Markel Fultz is going to be out until probably after the All-Star break. So that guard rotation of Jalen Suggs, R.J. Hampton, Cole Anthony, it's kind of hard to look around the league and, and look at a, a better, you know, young, you know, guard rotation, if you will. And then the other thing, you know, people meme about it all the time, and some people kind of take offense to when people start talking about, oh, well, John and Jeff, they're just going to trade the second-round pick no matter mm-hmm. what for cash considerations and that's what happened tonight they trade the 33rd pick um for a future second round pick and cash considerations so it just seems like every year they don't really seem to value the second round pick we all talked about this before the draft that we did not see the magic drafting three rookies tonight and that came to fruition the other thing that was rumored today where there were multiple teams calling and inquiring about terrence ross so as we started to get into like the 17, 18, 19, those picks when I thought maybe the Magic would have a, a chance to trade back up into the first round and you know maybe get some more depth. Every time I'm driving home and I'm listening to the draft on on my phone, and every time well, it's like there's a trade. This team has traded mm-hmm. blank 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 to the and I was just waiting for Orlando Magic you know for Terrence Ross. Thankfully that didn't happen, but it felt like there was like a you know. I don't know, 30, 40% chance that Terrence Ross is going to be traded tonight. So I'm really excited about, about the picks. Um, I think the magic really did have a really solid draft might not be exactly the guys that I wanted, but at five, I just don't think you could pass up Jalen Suggs. No. There were times this season that he was mocked to go, you know, second or third overall in this draft. So I, I, I'm pleasantly, you know, surprised by by what happened tonight. I thought for sure we were going to end up with you know Scotty Barnes or Jonathan Kaminga. Wasn't all that high on Barnes's offensive potential. Things that we've heard recently have kind of scared me off of Kaminga, and I think that's why you saw him fall a bit in this draft. Mm-hmm. Franz Wagner was a you know a pretty surprising pick, but I think when you talk about the the depth, especially at the forward position, the Magic they got a guy that has some potential to be really good. I think he's going to be good from day one. And it's also kind of like a like a fit pick, if you will. So we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll come back and we'll talk uh, specifically about Jalen Suggs and uh, Franz Wagner. Guys, the Olympics, Euros, baseball, major championships, and concerts are all in this summer. You know what isn't? A wild and hairy bush. 
Tame yourself below the belt with help from our friends at Manscaped, the leaders in below-the-waist grooming. Their fourth-generation performance package includes the brand-new Lawnmower 4.0. If an athlete treats their body like royalty, why not treat yours like Olympic gold? Fellas, do right by your boys and join the 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com with the code 6th, S-I-X-T-H, at manscaped.com. The world is starting to open, and the Performance Package 4.0 from Manscaped is here to help you get ready. Inside, you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, plus two free gifts, Performance Boxer Briefs, and the Shed Travel Bag. Talk about a world-class dismount into a post-quarantine world. This package is the perfect package for your package and peak performance in whatever sport you desire. So you guys can get 20% off and free shipping with the code 6th. That's S-I-X-T-H at manscaped.com. That's 20% off free worldwide shipping with the code 6th at manscaped.com. Achieve pubic glory this year with Manscaped. All right, so let's talk about Jalen Suggs specifically. So again, place goes crazy. They take Scotty Barnes at 4, and you have to take Jalen Suggs. We're all turning around looking at each other like it has to be Suggs, right? Like the magic would be crazy not to take Suggs. And I wasn't all that high on Suggs when we start comparing him to guys like a Jalen Green. I just think Jalen Green is the guy that, you know, really one of the only guys in the draft that rivals Cade Cunningham in, in terms of potential. But things that you saw from Jalen Suggs at Gonzaga, his intensity, playmaking ability, the athleticism, the strength that he has, um, the defensive tenacity, the leadership, I think those are all qualities that the Magic looked at and at five. It, it's kind of a no-brainer. I think we all, like you said, once they took Scotty Barnes, like you, you, you don't really have a choice. You have to take Jalen Suggs. But you aren't exactly thrilled about the pick. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of things that get misconstrued about Jalen Suggs um, in this way because, you know, you and I have talked about it and in, in Jalen Suggs' passing ability from the outlet pass, right? Like a, a lamello ball uh, type outlet pass, just down the court to the man under the rim, uh, you know, just a Hail Mary pass basically on the money. He's incredible. He has a knack for that. He's great in transition. He he fits the mold of Jamal Mosley's we I want to play with pace and I want to play with space. Like he 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 fits the pace part of that very well. Um, he's great at getting to the rim. There are while he's great at getting to the rim, there's a, there's some things that that he just doesn't do great yet which is interesting because when you think of him and you see him, you, you think of passionate, you think of fiery, you think of um, strong, you, you think of, you know, taking wanting to take anything, you know, head on. But, but a big part of Jalen Suggs game uh, is when he gets around the rim, he tries to be craftier than he needs to be. And he doesn't like go into players. Um, therefore, you know, in the NBA, like translating to free throw attempts, I just don't know if that's going to happen unless he really, um, you know, breaks that trend. And I think he will. I think, I think that he definitely will. But, but what I was wanting to say about, you know, the fact about his outlet passes and stuff, I think it makes us believe that he is a better, he's better at playmaking than he really is. Um, and, and what I mean by that is in the half court, everything slows down for him. He's not an east to west dribbler. Um, and, and, and he just wants to go right at the rim, right? We saw it in the championship game against Davion Mitchell and, and Baylor. Davion Mitchell ate his lunch a little bit on the defensive end. Davion Mitchell got him flustered. Davion Mitchell's a great defender, though. That is one thing I'll say. He's great at beating players to the spot. He, he's, he's incredible. He's a dog, too. But... Jalen Suggs just needs to work on his ball handling. I think it's never going to get away from him. He's he's never he's never going to get just like let it dribble out of bounds, right? Like he's never going to get flustered. It's always tight, but he just doesn't have much in terms of like a crossover. Like he's not flashy at all. Um, and while being flashy is not always the end all be all, it, it it does help you. Those guys typically can get around guys quicker um, than he can currently. So I want him to you know get to work on that. Summer league's coming up quick. I think that he will. There's a lot of of room for improvement for Jalen Suggs in those areas, but it's just with every other prospect in this draft, right? So I'm not I'm not down on Suggs per se. I know you had to take him at five. I know that he he can grow. He can get there. He 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 wants to work, right? So. 
there's no doubt in my mind that he will put in the work to to become a serviceable player in the NBA. I think that he'll you know be a starter for most of his career for sure. Um, but I do have my reservations, and you know, kind of like I just laid out. Yeah, like you talked about, like the the passing that the passing ability that he has, especially in transition. Um, I think that is something that can be refined that he can utilize more in the mm-hmm. half court. Obviously, in the NBA, you're playing with better athletes. Hopefully, the Magic are, are going to be working on spacing. You mentioned Jamal Mosley wants to play with pace. He wants to play with space, and he wants to play with the pass. And I think especially if we're able to start spacing the floor like most other NBA teams do, it's going to open up more opportunity for Jalen Suggs to show off some of that playmaking ability. Another thing that Magic fans have been talking about really for the last few years when they talk about guys like Nikola Vucevic and Evan Fournier and kind of the construction of that roster at the time was that the Magic didn't have enough dogs, right? When you look at guys that we've brought in like Michael Carter-Williams and James Ennis, Mm -hmm. Cole Anthony, the Magic have a few dogs now. And I would add Jalen Suggs to that, you know, Gonzaga Bulldogs. So <laughs> here he comes. Um, but I just – that was a little bit corny. I, that was very, <laughs> it's getting late. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. It's late. It, I, I'm very tired, dude. <laughs> had two of these Red Bulls. I've had nothing but, like, pizzeria combos, like, from 7-Eleven. Mm. So uh, it's getting late. But I like this, this quote um, from Jalen Suggs to Sports Illustrated when talking about teams that might pass him up in the draft. He said – I will say the ones that do pass up on me and take another prospect, you know, it'll come back. It'd be to their detriment. You can look at my track record and what I've done and where I've been, you know. It's always went at a high level at the highest level. This kid tonight in his, you know, right after he was picked, the press conference that he did with a lot of the Orlando Magic media, this kid cannot wait to get to Orlando. He's super excited to play here. He's good, you know, he's already good friends, it seems like, with RJ Hampton. So, I, I think we're putting together a squad of dogs. You look at Mo Wagner, everybody knows that he's kind of one of those guys that gets underneath your skin. Um, Franz Wagner is, is his brother, so I'm sure there's a little bit of that uh, that he's got as well. But, no, I, I really like the idea of, of Jalen Suggs now. Um, again, wasn't super high because I was hoping for, like, a Jalen Green. Uh, is Jalen is Suggs going to be that level of a prospect? I don't know. Do I think he has the ability to be really, really good? I mean, these are his stats at Gonzaga. 14 points per game, 5.3 rebounds. Good rebounder for a guard. He's 6'4", 4.5 assists, almost two steals a game, uh, less than a third block. 2.9 turnovers, shot 50% from the floor, so you know, very efficient for a guard. Only shot 33% from the three-point line, but you know the form looks promising. Shot 75.4% from the three-throw line. So in terms of you know his ability to, to space the floor, um, I I do think that he projects well as a shooter. Now in terms of you know like creating space and like the step back shots and, and things like that that really um, you know can take a, a a guard to the next level in terms of their offensive ability in the NBA. I don't know about that. Um, I'd like to see him you know get a little bit better in terms of creating space and creating separation off of the dribble. But when we talk about the athleticism with Jalen Suggs, he's not really like an above the rim guy. But you know, and not to be you know, not to bring up the bulldog thing again. But he's just going to lower his head, and you know, he's going to be able to get to the rim and you know, finish at a at a pretty um, you know significant rate. So I am excited about the the Jalen Suggs pick now. Again, like we said at five, you know, you just you really had to take him. But now you, you do know people, he was uh, he was Mr. Football as well, right? In Minnesota, Mr. Football and Mr. Basketball. Yep, yeah, so played quarterback. The kid is just like. He might not be a freak athlete in the you know the sense of like a Keon Johnson or something like that, but you're a f- different animal to win Mr. Basketball and Mr. Football in a whole state. In yeah the in, in the entire state like that's yeah. that's not nothing like right. David Steele would say that's anything that's anything. So I mean you know all state you know quarterback Mr. Football. You look at that like that shows you some of the you know intelligence level that you have to have, some of the vision that you have to have that I think does you know benefit him on the on the basketball floor. And I think you know I feel like a lot of times we overanalyze these guys in college um, in terms of like the decision making because a lot of times you know they're the best player on the floor and they feel the need to do everything. Again, in the NBA, he's going to have better coaching. He's going to be playing with better players, and I think all of that will benefit him. And then when you talk about, like, we saw, you know, Jamal Mosley working with Mo Bamba. I cannot wait 
to see all of these guys, you know, working with Jamal Mosley. I'm really, really excited about that. So, um, so Franz Wagner. Now we did, you know, uh, some post draft interviews with some fans at at the Amway Center, you know, as we were leaving, and everyone's super excited about the Jalen Suggs pick. Like you had to take Suggs. But people are pretty split on Wagner. A lot of fans really they don't know who he is. They hadn't looked all that much into him because if you're listening to guys like us or you know Locked On Magic or you're reading some of these mock drafts, it was like Moses Moody, James Booknight, those kind of guys at eight, and Franz Wagner was kind of an afterthought. So people are kind of split on Wagner. So just going back to our like draft prospect breakdown that we did a few weeks back Luke this is what I had in terms of his pros and cons so he's a great defender not crazy athletic but has a really high motor always seems to be in the right spots in Michigan he actually ran a lot of pick and roll with him as the primary ball handler but we see a lot of that in the NBA I'm not sold on that Um, but runs the floor really well a good passer in transition he has potential as a shooter only shot 34 percent from three at Michigan but shot 83 percent from the three throw from the free throw line um, he's not going to, again, not going to be a guy that's really going to create his own shot off of the dribble. I do think there is some limited upside just due to his lack of athleticism. But what everyone is saying, people that are reviewing this, you know, dr- this uh, this pick from the Magic, is that this is a guy that's going to come in and basically contribute from day one. It's a high floor pick essentially. May not have the highest ceiling, but a guy that's essentially going to be a glue guy is going to come in and, and contribute at a relatively high rate from day one yeah and and that's I mean that's kind of like you said then and also like we've already said uh earlier too good at everything it seems uh could improve the three-point shot for sure um but not elite at anything and I think that's a big reason that he can come in and contribute day one because he does have a lot of good things um kind of the the things that I've wrote down um was I noted he averaged 1.3 steals a game one block a game uh, great defender uh, and and can really just attribute to um, you know you can really he'll contribute right away like you said and he'll contribute defensively um, and you know he can be a playmaker if needed like you said he 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 was the primary ball handler in some pick and roll situations too um, I don't see that like you said being something that they really lean on uh, however if we have a situation like last year where all our point guards you know God forbid start to get injured Franz Wagner Wagner get up there bud uh it's your time so uh but he does have an extremely high defensive IQ um I think that there's just things about him that that just he needs to work on but he's still young he's extremely young he turns I think 20 in August so uh really young a lot of growth to be had but also is able to contribute right away like you said just a high floor guy um and uh, you know I'm I'm interested to see what what Wagner can become especially because nobody was really thinking of the magic drafting him you know until his name was called Well now I'm super excited for summer league that's coming up in you know just over yeah. a week so um RJ a few months back was on Terrence Ross's podcast said he'll probably play a few games of summer league um, Cole, I, I don't really know. I would like to see him play summer league because he didn't really have that experience last year. Mm-hmm. Chuma's another guy that I would hope to see there. Obviously, Jalen Suggs, Franz Wagner. Like we, we should honestly have a pretty stacked summer league team. You know, at least the the first few games to see those guys out there. But you know, it's going to be exciting. How do you feel? I, I was talking to a few guys about this tonight. Do you want to see Mosley coaching the summer league team? I, why not? You got Typically, so many... that's not something that you see out of head coaches, but you know, first-time head coach, he's really still getting to, to you know know a lot of these guys. He's got to get the reps in as a head coach. I personally really hope that he coaches the summer league team. I mean, a lot of those guys are going to be contributors when real games happen, anyway. <laughs> so, but who knows? I, I don't expect him to. Um, I would expect that he obviously just kind of puts into place the things that he wants them to try and 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 most importantly just wants them to start to gel together um using you know his sets and his I- ideals and 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 all those things so i would just imagine it's going to be an assistant um but yeah i mean it would be cool to see mosley out there and it would be a very mosley thing to do i think uh, yeah. someone that just gets involved with the guys like we've already touched on so many times but that really would uh wouldn't surprise me if mosley was out there at least for a couple of the games 
Maybe he doesn't. I know he coached, you know, summer league for the Dallas Mavericks, you know, a few times. So maybe we don't see that out of him. Uh, it would be cool. Um, but, but yeah, man, I mean, a lot of things, uh, another thing that people are asking a lot of is now we just, we're so guard heavy when you talk about Markel and Jalen mm-hmm. and Cole mm-hmm. and RJ and Terrence and Gary yeah. and Bacon and nice. Michael Carter Williams. Like tonight, Again, we thought that Terrence Ross was going to be moved. I mean, especially after they take Jalen Suggs, because again, you are so guard heavy. What, what do you think happens? Like, do you? I, I think Gary and Terrence are really going to be prime candidates at the trade deadline. Last year it was Aaron and it was Evan Fournier. This year, I think it's be, going to be Gary and Terrence Ross. Yeah, yeah, I think it's got to be. It has to be them because you look at the other guys. I mean, those are young guys that they're wanting to invest in. Jamal Mosley has been hired to do that, to to build relationships with them, to develop them. There's no developing Terrence Ross and Gary Harris. This team is rebuilding. This is, I mean, Jonathan, we've gone through this so many times, but it's like you go through our roster, you get 15 spots for the for, for games. Right now, after tonight's draft, then thank goodness they didn't use that 33rd pick because that, that kid's going to go to the I G really League. wanted to see them take JT Thor. I really did. I don't know how much you've watched on him, but that dude is big, long, and has a really smooth shooting stroke. So I was I was like, maybe we just take a risk on him. Maybe he's like a two-way guy. But, um, yeah, it's kind of a meme at this point, but Jeff I think just does not use second-round picks really. Right. Well, also his last name is Thor, so I think that was a, a big reason people, you know, one of Thor, but it's a cool like, name, but like <laughs> whatever. Um, but yeah, so I, I don't know. Um, I'm glad they didn't use that 33rd pick. That poor kid would have been in the G league faster than anything else. And so whatever, just get undrafted and go get a G league trial. I don't know. Um, so yeah, because at this point you've got two free agent spots. Really? If you're expecting, you know, that, that Gary Harris stays through the off season. Um, and the rest of the guys, Jonathan, they're all young, everybody. I mean, even Bacon's relatively young. Like you've got you've got Fultz, Ji, Bamba, WCJ, Cole, Chuma, D- MCW, uh, RJ Hampton, Bacon, Jalen Suggs, uh, Franz Wagner, Mo Wagner, and then fourteen to fifteen spot. Right, and that's if Ennis doesn't stay. That's uh, considering Otto Porter being gone, which we definitely think, and Brosdakis being gone. So. You got you got two spots, dude, and and they're gonna hopefully fill it with a couple veterans that can come in and contribute and and be leaders immediately. Because whilst you know, I besides like MCW, I don't see the vets that are currently there being leaders. We've talked about this already, but they need to add the leaders to the locker room. They need to add two key guys that are gonna come in for cheap, and that's just what's gonna happen. At least one, at least one. Yeah, I think I I think those guys, you know, Gary and Terrence, you know, I would expect one if not both of them to be gone, you know, by the the trade deadline. You know, Gary Harris is going to be, you know, he, he's going to be expiring. Um, you know, Terrence Ross has another year on his deal. You know, like you said, Otto Porter Jr. Some people have talked about bringing him back, but I just I don't think the Magic are going to be able to afford him, and I think mm-hmm. he would probably just want, you know, a bigger role than you know the magic are going to want at this point in terms of, you know, his development and everything like that. So yeah, man, honestly, I, 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 what are you going to give this, this draft from the magic? I'm going to go like a B plus. Like I think it was a really solid draft out of the magic. Had it been, you know, moody, you know, at eight, I think we're looking at like a, a, a plus draft, Um, a plus, 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 plus. Um, I think he's just like the, you know, more upside than Wagner, which I think people were kind of hoping for because we've been talking about like, you need to try to get a star and then you're going to go with somebody that's, you know, pretty safe. Jalen Suggs might be both. He might, might be a star. He might be safe, but Franz Wagner just felt like a very safe pick. Yeah. But I wanted Moody solely for the fact that he was also safe. And he can shoot. So shoot that thing. Boy. Shoot that thing. So yeah. I yeah. I would uh yeah, would have loved that. But I I'll I'd give it a B. Just yeah, just a flat B. Um Suggs falling was great, but the eight pick, I don't know. That's gonna take me some time, I think. Yeah, well, I mean, the two guys that I wanted more than anyone in this draft, Jalen Green and Al Prince Shagoon, went to the same team. So I'm, I'm I guess, you know, <laughs> 
I'll be watching the, the, <laughs> rock, the box scores, like, hmm, what's going on over there? You know what I mean? So I don't know, man, but we'll see. But w- one of the highlights of the night tonight, I mean, you know, we did everything at Harry Buffalo, and that was amazing. Shout out to Harry Buffalo. They were great. Um, dude, their Boom Boom Shrimp there, if you guys haven't been to Harry Buffalo and had the Boom Boom Shrimp, please treat yourself. Phenomenal, big, by big the way. Big Boom Boom guy. Be- big Boom Boom Shrimp guy. But uh, no, just thanks for everybody that came out, came and you know sat in you know section 106. It just made it a really fun, you know, crazy atmosphere um, at the draft. But then Luke, the Eastern Conference Finals trophy from 2008 2009 was just out on the concourse. People were walking past it like it didn't exist. <laughs> Me and Kevin saw it. We basically ran to it, you know, to take pictures with it, yep. and that was incredible. Like you see. I didn't realize they like engrave everyone's name on that trophy. Oh, so really? to like check that out was really I I told Kevin I said unfortunately this was before the draft started. We were like this might be the highlight of the night <laughs> for us <laughs> taking pictures with the Eastern Conference Finals trophy. Yeah. But uh but that was really dope man. So yeah man, I mean we got a lot to look forward to over the next couple of weeks as you know we get into summer league and then after summer league we're really going to start to get into like the dog days of summer here as the Orlando Magic News is, is really going to come to like a, a standstill. We got free agency coming up in a few when weeks, that? so that's going to be interesting. Um, free agency, I, I have the, the key dates. Let me go ahead and pull this up here. Uh, give me just one moment. Yeah, yeah so uh, Summer League starts August 8th, and then free agency starts um, August 2nd. So that's like Sunday. three days from now. That's Monday. Monday. That's going to be a... It's going to be interesting. Yeah, teams can start negotiating with con- with uh, free agents, and they can begin uh, signing free agents August 6th. So there's the four-day moratorium, as mm-hmm. they say. If you guys remember the DeAndre Jordan fiasco <laughs> a few <laughs> years back with the Clippers and, and the Mavericks, yep. that's why they have a moratorium. So, oh, man. Yeah, it's it's hard to be mad at this draft. Like it, As soon as we got Suggs, I'm like, unless we do something crazy and take someone that no one has ever heard of, yeah. Somebody that was like mocked in like the twenties. This was a, a pretty solid draft for the Magic. Again, not exactly what we expected at eight, but when we look at the guys that they've taken that we didn't exactly think of all that much, like Chuma Okiki. Cole Anthony was in the conversation last year, but I know there were a few other guys that Magic fans were talking about as well. But the outside of Mo Bamba, this front office has proven that they are going to like the pick is going to hit. So I think at worst, Franz is going to be a like a pretty decent rotation guy. Is he going to be a star? Is he going to be an all star? Probably not. Um, Jalen Jalen Suggs though, I I think that kid's got a shot to to be really really good. So hard to be mad at this draft, Luke. Yeah, yeah, definitely is. I I think that like you said, Wagner could be just a, a rotational guy throughout his career. I mean, nothing to be mad at there if he can do that for Orlando. That's fine. Um, and then yeah, Suggs. I think he's borderline all-star material. Um, he might get there. He might not. But I think that, like I said, I think he will be uh, a contributing starter for most of his career. All right, Luke. Uh, anything else as we wrap up this uh, post-draft reaction show here? No. I think we're, uh, think we're all good. I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to go to bed as well. I think Kevin is probably getting home right now. It's 1 a.m., and uh, this it will be uploaded, and Kevin's going to get to work on that. <laughs> it's a long night. Uh, thankfully, I took the day off tomorrow, so I, I was smart enough to I do d- that. I so. did not. So I have a doctor's yeah. appointment at 8 a.m., so let's Yeah, you have fun with that. Yeah, I will. Absolutely. 8 a.m., your time, so that's eight hours from now. That's eight hours from now. I need to go so to bed now. You get some shut-eye. Well, yeah. anyways, thank you guys for hanging out with us tonight. Thanks for hanging out with us live here uh, for Luke. This has been Jonathan. You guys are listening to The Six Man Show, and we will catch you guys next time. See ya. Thanks for listening to The Six Man Show. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and Stitcher to get new episodes downloaded directly to your phone. Please take a minute to give us a five-star rating and a review. It would really help us out a lot. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Six Man Show and like us on Facebook. We'll catch you guys next time. Go Magic.